Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to the video. I hope your day is going great. Mine is and hell yes Team USA is finally announced So this morning there was like a teaser reveal posted and it said like July 9th I thought we all got you baited and we weren't going to know the roster until the 9th Regardless though it is here and I'm super excited to talk about it. Sorry about the video being so late guys It is July 4th it's about four hours after the announcement. I am going to get this video out though. So if you guys are excited for that, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to my channel. And if there's any background noise that sound like gunshots, guys, do not worry. Your boy is safe. It's just fireworks. I, they've been going off all day. I don't know how to, you know, not get the microphone to pick them up. So yeah, if you hear that, you know what it is. And now let's go ahead and hop into this, guys. So Team USA was announced on Twitter. By the way, the live stream that they did was a complete fail. <laughs> it was so laggy. I did try to catch it on my phone, but it was honestly just a joke. Regardless, though, this is what was posted on Twitter. In our players we trust introducing america's roster for overwatch world cup starting off with our main tanks we have muma from the houston outlaws and super from the san francisco shock moving on to the off tanks huge surprise here guys we have mcgravy from team envy out of contenders and his counterpart will be space from the la valiant so looking overall at the tank lineup this is pretty nutty Honestly, like, I I'm a little, you know, up and down about McGravy being there instead of Colmat. I, I guess Colmat didn't make the cut. McGravy, he impressed the, the committee, so congratulations to him. But this is solid, man. Super space, Muma space, that sounds disgustingly good. I definitely think Muma and Super are the top two main tanks out of all of North America. 100%. These guys are going to show up. And I don't need to say anything about space. We've all been talking about him. He 100% deserves this spot. And that's going to be our tank lineup, guys. Let's move on to the DPS players. We have Dante from the San Francisco Shock. Sinatra from the San Francisco Shock. Hydration from the LA Gladiators. And Zachary from the Philadelphia Fusions University team out of contenders. So two contenders players making this roster, guys. Round of applause for Zachary and McGravy so far. Huge by them. Honestly, like... It must mean so much to be competing with these Overwatch League players representing USA in the World Cup, and you're only a contenders player. And the thing about Zachary is he's underage, guys. He could be in the Overwatch League if he was 18 or older. So this is just a huge bonus to his resume. No doubt when Zachary turns 18, he's going to be sought after by many Overwatch League teams to pick him up. Moving on to the other guys, we have Hydration from the LA Gladiators. He'll probably be playing Projectile mainly for these guys. I know Dante and Sinatra and Zachary all have like pretty big hero pulls and they could touch the projectile but hydration is like hard projectile only so he's probably going to get a lot of start time when it comes to Farah, genji junk rat stuff like that now moving on to the two boys from the san francisco shock dante and sinatra both of them superstars man we all knew sinatra once he joined the league he was going to be a big time player he was going to carry his own dante stage two just came out of nowhere he just lit up the league and he's been an all-star since so you got to give respect to him Overall, looking at these guys, I definitely think this is probably one of the strongest DPS lineups you could have made out of all the players. I do like the addition of Zachary there. He's great. He he deserves to be here 100%. Same with McGravy. I don't want to see anybody saying these guys don't belong here. Where's Cole Matt? You know, where's Baby Bay? Stuff like that. No, these guys deserve to be here. They made it through the trials they're in. Moving on to the support players, we have Sleepy from the San Francisco Shock, Rockus from the Houston Outlaws. Elk from Philadelphia Fusion University, another contenders players, guys. Three of them, that's awesome. And then last but not least, we have Moth from the San Francisco Shock. So interesting enough, five out of these 12 players are actually from San Francisco Shock. We might see the entire San Francisco Shock roster moving into play for America. That would be interesting. They're definitely solid players. To be honest though, I did feel like I was going to see a little bit more of like a Houston Outlaws America roster, but San Francisco Shock guys, they must've came up huge in the trials. So congratulations to them. And real quick, back to Elf, man. Another guy coming in from Contenders. That is the third one. So it seems like they kind of went for a, a Contenders player in every single role. We have McGravy for off tank. In the DPS, we have Zach. And then for supports, we have Elk. And I definitely think Elk deserves to be here. If you guys didn't see Elk's land performance at Overwatch Contenders Season 1 Finals in Poland, 
Dude, you need to go back and watch it. This guy played like an animal. The usual carries for Philadelphia Fusion University is Alarm and Who Are You? And to be honest, yeah, Alarm played good, Who Are You played good, but Elk, he played better than them both, especially on that Ana, which was just a complete surprise pick out of nowhere. Not many teams were running it, and Elk just decided to run it like five maps out of seven, and it just amazing performance coming from him. He definitely deserves to be up here. Sleepy, solid pickup. He can carry his own. Raucous, solid. Moth, interesting pick there. Four months ago, Moth was on Toronto Esports, not in the Overwatch League. Then San Francisco Shock reached out to him. He turned into a big time player for them. They turned their season around, started winning some more games. Now he's on the Team USA roster. Another great story, very similar story to Dante's Rise and... Man, this team just looks completely different from the one last year, honestly, guys. Starting off with the main tanks, we have Muma and Super. No more fact fiction, and I think that's an upgrade. Honestly, Muma and Super are amazing. They 100% do deserve to be here. As for off tanks, we have Space and McGravy over Cool Matt, and I think Space is better than Cool Matt. Honestly, Space looks like one of the best off tanks in the entire world, let alone just North America, so... You know, we'll, we'll see what McGravy can do, but I'm pretty sure Space is going to get all of the playing time. And it's not even just inside of the game for Space. What we've heard from the LA Valiant players and coaching staff, this guy outside of the game just brings the morale up, keeps the team hyped and ready to play, always in a good mood. That is something that you guys, you cannot overrate. It is crucial to any team and it will help you win 100%. Moving on to the DPS players, instead of Jake, we now have Hydration, and let's be honest, Hydration proved he is one of the best projectile players in all of the Overwatch League, and Jake, he really struggled this year. I know he had a great performance on Junkrat last year in the World Cup, but, you know, Hydration can do exactly the same thing, and now we'll be able to see that on Genji, Farah, whatever the other heroes are. As for Dante and Sinatra, I mean, we saw Sinatra last year. I'd say he had an okay performance. It was like an underperformance from what we expected, but it was the guy's first time like playing on LAN and internationally, so you gotta cut him some slack there. Now he's had a lot of practice in the league, and let's be honest, in the last stage or so, Sinatra has really come into his own. He's been a great performer, and I do think he will be much better this year than he was last year. And then we have Dante right behind him, so... <laughs> you know, and Zachary as well. So it's just crazy lineup here. Like, the reason I'm laughing is, and I don't want to be mean here, I'm not trying to pick on Jake or say he's a bad player, but I, I, I just feel like Zachary and Dante, Hydration, like, those three players are so much more valuable than having Jake. And I was so high on Jake going into the Overwatch League, I, I had really high expectations from him, and he did fulfill some of them, just, like, more so outside of the game and just, like, vocally for the team and way less so inside of the game with his actual performance, which was kind of disappointing. Damn, boys, you hear that fireworks? That is crazy. But yeah, the reason I'm like, I'm not trying to be mean about Jake, but this, they're just so much better. Like, Sinatra and Jake, and now it's going to be like Sinatra, Dante, Hydration, Zachary. That sounds so much better than just Sinatra, Jake. Now, maybe having Jake on this roster wouldn't be so bad if he wasn't playing. You know, just have him in the back as another vocal guy, you know, maybe helping coach as a player, stuff like that. Could be good. Just playing-wise, I think these players are so much better. Moving on to the supports, we have another guy. So only two people are the same from last year. We have Rockus and Sinatra. And these guys might not even start. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Zachary or Dante got the start over Sinatra, or Sleepy or Elk got the start over Rockus. There's just so much more competition this year, and you kind of, like, know who the good players are from America. Last year was kind of like, okay, you know, we could throw a random team together. Also, Kai Kai was the coach, and I don't want to take shots at Kai Kai again. Seems like I'm always doing that whenever I get the chance. But the guy wasn't that great of a coach on Dallas Fuel. So if he wasn't a great coach on Dallas Fuel, why would he be a great coach for Team USA? We got Aero in control now, who was a great coach for the Dallas Fuel. So clearly he's going to be a great coach for Team USA. And I think he knows what he's doing. And I have 100 full faith and trust in Aero. Bring us gold home to USA, man. I believe in you. Let's go, boys. Hashtag believe in Aero in the chat. And honestly, I, I don't know who's going to start out of the supports. I don't know who will get the start out of Elk or Moth. Uh, probably Moth. I do feel like he's more ready, but like Elk is really flexible. Like I said, he busted that Ana out. Moving on to Sleepy and Rockus. I don't know. Sleepy, he was definitely a sleeper pick throughout the entire Overwatch League. He never got the credit he deserved. Amazing player. Rockus, eh, 
I don't know. Rockus impresses me, but then sometimes he doesn't impress me. So I, I don't know. He definitely deserves to be here. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, eh, because I don't know if he should start over Sleepy. I definitely think Sleepy will get the start and roll here. Probably Sleepy and Moth because of the synergy thing. But, you know, I don't know. You, let me know down below what you guys think about this whole Team USA roster. I think it's really solid, honestly. I think they might have a chance to contest. I didn't say beat. I didn't say beat Korea. I think Korea is going to win the whole thing, 100%. But what I'm saying is I think America might have a chance to contest them and have a close match. Maybe pick up one or two maps. But, like, I, I don't know, man. Just in South Korea, there's just too much superstar talent. And I know the saying, you know, you put too many superstars together. It might not work. You have to have a good team. But let's be honest, they're going to be a good team. When you look at the South Korean roster, it's not like we see a bunch of players that tilt or, you know, can't work together. They're all great team players. So they're going to come together. They're going to be a great team. That's pretty much it, though, guys. The Team USA roster. Let me know what you guys think about this down below. How far can they go? My prediction is probably the finals. I mean... It depends when they get faced up against the South Korean team. Just like last year, whoever goes up against Korea early on is going to get knocked out. So if America gets lucky like Canada did last year, then they might be able to make the finals. Now, I, I do think America was a better team than Canada last year. They did put up a better fight against Korea. So, you know, it depends on where they get placed in the bracket. Hopefully we get to see the best final possible. And hopefully that's Team USA versus Korea. Yeah, I'm biased here, guys. I'm from America. I live in Colorado. Let's go. I, I hope they make it as far as they can. I hope they win the whole thing. I'm definitely repping my country, but I do got to be realistic. As I said multiple times so far, Korea is a powerhouse and it's going to be crazy. So yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Be sure to leave a comment down below. Who do you guys think will win? And that's it for me. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. And also, real quick, I know I've missed some of the team announcements like Finland and stuff. I am going to catch up on all of them, guys. There's just so many and some of them, like, I, I couldn't find them anywhere, but I've been doing my research. I have a notepad. I have all the links saved up, so we're going to go over all of those teams as well. It's just I have to get this one out. It's such a big announcement, just like you, uh, just like the South Korean team. So, yeah, thank you for watching, guys. I'm out of here. Be sure to like and subscribe. Peace.